Happy Sabbath, everyone! <clears throat> Today I'm going to share the story about Noah. God clearly told Noah that he had enough of the wickedness of mankind and he was preparing to destroy all men and the beasts of the earth. In Genesis 6, 13 says, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them and with the earth. Noah was just like you and me today. He had the choice to take God at his word, or in essence, call God a liar. But Noah had faith. He had faith in God, and he had faith in his word. In Genesis 6, 9, Noah was just a man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Because Noah's faithfulness in daily walking with God, he knew clearly the voice of God and he knew he could trust the word of God. God told Noah his means of destroying the earth would be through flood waters. Noah had never seen rain much less than a flood. And yet, God told him that it was going to rain so hard that the water would destroy the world. It's difficult to believe a warning about something that you have never seen before and now God was asking him to build a huge boat in the middle of the dry land. He had most likely never seen a boat before. Therefore, there was no way no one could begin to understand all that God was asking him to do. Noah believed God's word even though he did not understand and he faithfully followed what God says. Thank you for listening to my story. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Church. Today, I will be sharing a story about Esther. For a long time, Esther has shown the spirit of obedience and faithfulness to her cousin Mordecai. When her parents died, Mordecai took her in and cared for her. When King Xerxes was looking for a new queen, 
Esther listened to her cousin on how to win the king's favor, and she became the queen. One day, Mordecai found out that Haman wanted to destroy the Jewish nation and begged Queen Esther to help. Of course, Esther was afraid because no one in the royal palace knew her true identity. No one knew, <clears throat> knew that she was a Jew. Mordecai was asking for her to do something very risky. Everyone knew that if any man or woman who approached the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that he or she be put to death. For this reason, Esther was afraid to approach the king, lest he become angry and have her executed. Sometimes when we want to do the right thing and help someone, it is risky. In Esther 4 verse 14, For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esther was called in such a time as this to face her fear and faithful to the calling. She had to approach the king in the inner court and reveal Haman's evil plot. Thankfully, she found favor with the king and she has been faithful to her calling and the entire race was saved from the evil plot. God can use various men and women to accomplish his will, only when we are faithfully responding to his calling. Thank you. Sabbath, everyone. Today, I would like to share my story about David and Goliath. The giant arose and came to meet David. As David ran to meet him, he took a stone, put it in the sling, and threw it at Goliath. It struck him in the forehead, and he fell upon his face. 
the victory was won. In this simple story, we find a lesson on how we face our difficulties. We all will face difficulties in our life. The devil wants us to destroy our faith. He wants us to crumble under the pressures of life. He wants us to compromise our principles. He wants us to surrender our commitment and take the broad way. But remember, it is the narrow road that leads to life everlasting. On every hand, there are hindrances, obstacles, and difficulties to be overcome. The success of our life depends on how we face your trials. David had two things to help him as he faced the giant, courage and faith. One of our mistakes as we faced our trials, temptations and difficulties is that we fail to remember all that God has done for us. We must remember God's provision and protection. Through the days of the past, his power has not changed as he once delivered you. So will he now deliver you? David had courage and faith in God. Even though he knew how to use a sling and stone, it was not his skill that won the battle, but his courage to have faith in God. Faith in God overcomes obstacles. David was just a youth and a giant or man of experience. Faith looks beyond all difficulties and a courage to trust God who is greater than all. Never let your faith in God waver. God can be trusted no matter what the situation is. True faith is confidence that God is who he says he is and confidence that he will do everything he has promised to do. Thank you for listening to my story. Goliath was a mostly mean, big and burly Philistine. He wore armor everywhere and fighting was his thing. David was an Israelite, a shepherd boy. Spun his sling around, boldly fired a rock.